During the summer of 2019, I conducted oral history interviews with U.S. Army soldiers at Fort Hood in order to answer the following three research questions. Number one, what personal records do soldiers keep of their military experience, especially after they have been deployed? Number two, what do soldiers do, if anything, to preserve their records of their military experience? And number three, how do soldiers value their personal records of their military experience? I conducted oral history interviews during the summer of 2019 with U.S. Army soldiers at Fort Hood, one of the largest military installations in the world and home to many recent veterans and active duty service members. There were 31 individuals interviewed. 28 were male, three were female, six were black, 21 were white, and four were Hispanic. The subjects ranged from privates in their early 20s who had yet to deploy, to captains who had experienced two tours in Iraq and or Afghanistan, to colonels nearing retirement who had experienced multiple deployments that included conflicts prior to 2001. The interviews ranged from 45 minutes to four and a half hours per subject. Each interview consisted of a complete oral history of the soldier's life up to their current duty station and covered their background and service history as well as the central research questions. Oral history was chosen as the research method in order to investigate the ways in which subjects' personal history, such as major life events or familial upbringing, affected their personal digital archiving practices. From the findings, subjects were categorized into three groups, no preservation, physical preservation only, and high preservation. No preservation individuals were those who either kept no records whatsoever of their military experience or were doing nothing to actively preserve the records that they did have. The majority of subjects, 58%, fell into this category. There were three main reasons for why a soldier would fall into the no preservation category. First, there was evidence of a general lack of digital preservation knowledge among soldiers. Digital materials were kept on storage media, including SIM cards, cell phones, external hard drives, thumb drives, and disks. And while many soldiers kept these storage media in cool, dark, and dry conditions, some even going so far as to lock them in a safe or in some way physically separate them from other like storage media so as not to mix them with other digital records or risk them being accidentally wiped, nothing was being done to preserve the digital records. In fact, following their deposit in the safe or other storage location, there was no attention paid to the storage media whatsoever, except when the soldier wished to retrieve records or add to the collection. This was particularly troubling in light of the fact that many soldiers would type up physical records, such as letters or journals, with the goals of decreased physical storage space requirements and increased legibility, but also with the misguided understanding that the simple act of transferring to digital was all that was required to ensure the long-term preservation of the records. Social media was heavily used by soldiers as digital preservation tools, with Facebook used for photographs and YouTube used for moving image recordings. Despite the social media website's inherent problems for digital preservation, from the well-known fact of the company's poor track record for data protection that scandals such as that involving Cambridge Analytica have brought to light, to less widely known concerns such as the fact that the company adds its own metadata to photographs uploaded to the web website which can interfere with the provenance of the original record and strip away important contextual information. A common refrain reported by soldiers when asked how they are preserving their digital photographs was, quote, Facebook keeps them. This was done both on an individual as well as a group basis, with entire units often having a Facebook page with multiple photo albums from particular deployments or missions, and unit members uploading collections of photographs over time. The same is done with YouTube for moving image recordings. As a consequence of these readily accessible online archives of photographic and moving image records, many soldiers do not bother to make any records of their own experiences. Instead, their personal archive of their military experience consists primarily or wholly of other people's records. 
photographs and videos that they have downloaded from the internet that come to represent a record of either specific experiences with a particular unit or of a particular place, or the general military culture in which they served. Subjects told stories that suggest the presence of a sharing culture among modern veterans. At relatively stable locations, often a transfer station such as one in Kuwait or Bagram Air Base in Afghanistan, soldiers would take chance encounters with fellow soldiers from varying units as an opportunity to build their collection of what they considered to be the most captivating digital photographs and videos documenting the war. A reliance on social media for digital preservation shifts this sharing culture to the online space, thereby increasing its reach exponentially. The result of this is demonstrated by anecdotal evidence from my own work as archivist for the Archive of Modern American Warfare at Texas Tech University. During appraisal and accession actions, I consistently found whole collections of photographs and videos accumulated rather than created by donors, and often these materials were duplicates from the collections of other donors who did not share any overlapping service history. These digital records largely documented major events during the time of the donor's military service, such as the capture of Saddam Hussein. Quote, action scenes, such as videos of an airstrike resulting in casualties or photographs of the aftermath of a car bomb detonation, or commemorative videos for a particular unit, one with whom the donor may or may not have served. The presence of a sharing culture and the reliance on social media for digital preservation has implications for the robustness of the historical record for modern conflicts and the diversity of voices being preserved. General apathy was a second reason for why a soldier would fall into the no preservation category. Some soldiers would keep digital records, but then appear unconcerned over whether they could ever be retrieved again. A common answer to a question regarding where the soldier kept their digital records was, quote, they're on my phone somewhere. Many soldiers would still have the original phone that they carried during their service and used to record their experiences, but then would talk about switching to a new phone model and not being overly concerned with ensuring that everything transferred to each new device. Indeed, some reported digital record losses because of this action. Physical record keeping was also a challenge for these individuals. Some spoke of having the idea of keeping a journal, but then would give up on it after a few entries, after deciding it wasn't their style, or they just couldn't get into the habit of doing it. For others, the value they placed on their personal, digital, personal military records would change after major life events, such as the soldier who kept a detailed journal of his time in Iraq, only to later throw it away after a painful divorce because he didn't want the memories he now associated with that time in his life. Regardless of the reason for the feeling of apathy toward record keeping, it was almost always a temporary mindset. The vast majority of those soldiers who did not keep any records stated that it is one of their biggest regrets. The third reason why a soldier would fall into the no preservation category had to do with security concerns. For soldiers working in active war zones, many of which carried certain security clearances during their tenure, there were obvious implications that affected their ability to create records of their experiences. Subject number seven, a lieutenant, had recently returned from deployment to Syria as part of Operation Inherent Resolve. His records, including notes of his activities and digital photographs stored on his phone, were kept solely as an operational necessity, and not only were they very closely monitored, such as keeping very brief notes written in his own personal shorthand and disabling the cloud service on his phone so that photographs were not inadvertently backed up anywhere, but they were destroyed once they had served their immediate purpose. Behavior such as this is typical in understanding for high-level operations, and the need to strike a balance between minimizing records for operational security and keeping records for later historical study of those operations is a tricky line to walk. But there are also instances of soldiers being overly cautious and declining to keep records of their experiences, even in situations where doing so would not have been an obvious security concern. This was most prevalent among the lower enlisted privates and young officers who foresaw making a career out of the army. These individuals mentioned feeling uncertain as to when it would and would not be appropriate to take records, especially photographs and videos, during their deployment, and opted to not take any records at all rather than risk security violations or censure from a superior. The second category that emerged from the research findings was the physical preservation only group, or P. 
PPO, shown in the graph here as some preservation. Those soldiers who fell into this category were those who exhibited good physical record keeping, but were failing to adequately preserve their personal digital records. A small minority of subjects, only 10%, fell into this category. Subject number four, a captain, had kept shoeboxes of correspondence that she had had between her and her fellow soldier husband while deployed, but was also storing a fairly significant collection of digital records on flash drives in her office drawers with no attention being paid to their preservation. Subject number 31 kept a journal for every one of his deployments, but also kept his digital records on storage media in a desk drawer at home and was also taking no steps toward their preservation. While sharing many of the same reasons for their lack of proper preservation actions as the no preservation group, low general technology efficacy was particularly evident for the PPO group. Many soldiers stated that they were not really a technical person or language to that effect. Subject number four said that she wanted to show her daughter that by choosing the physical communication format of letters and preserving these physical records of their military experiences, her and her husband, quote, were keeping it old school, even in 2009, the age of technology, end quote. This suggests a reluctance to engage too extensively in digital record keeping and an admission that this position may be an, anti an antiquated one. It should be noted that subject number four was a 30-something woman, 20-something during the time of her deployment, and advanced age was not shown to be a correlating factor in displaying signs of low technology efficacy. I have noted in my own work that some soldiers may be passing on the propensity for avoiding digital record keeping to future generations as well. As I once overheard a 30-something veteran telling a group of ROTC students at a Veterans Day event to, quote, make sure to write physical letters home and maybe keep a journal. You're really going to appreciate having that physical record of your experience when you get back, end quote. The final and most intriguing category of subjects was the high preservation group. This category consisted of those soldiers who kept detailed records of their military experience in both physical and digital formats and exhibited excellent stewardship of these records. A significant minority of soldiers interviewed, 32%, fell into this category. Subject number nine had a large photograph collection that included approximately 400 digital photographs that he had backed up, as well as a number of physical photograph albums where he kept countless photographs that he had taken with disposable film cameras. He also had a full set of correspondence between himself and his parents written while he was deployed. All of these physical records were stored in places such as a closet or under a bed, and the soldier noted that their cool temperature and absence of light made them ideal for the record's preservation. Subject number 10 talked about a medic who had been designated his unit's unofficial historian and who ran a digital photograph archive consisting of photographs from the platoon that was backed up. This same soldier talked about his own records, which included photographs, journals, notebooks, and sketches, all of which either physically stored in a cool, dark location or digitally backed up. This soldier discussed how he was encouraged to take an active role in keeping records of his military experience after his grandmother showed him his grandfather's personal records from the Vietnam War. Many other examples were found in this category of soldiers backing up digital materials using multiple storage media and cloud storage, having their parents or significant others keeping all the letters sent home, keeping storage bins full of physical photographs and personal papers, and keeping daily journals. By far the most committed soldier was subject number 19, who took his VHS-C tape recordings and converted them to digital files, storing the originals in a cool, dark location. He then backed up the digital files along with his collection of digital photographs using both a local RAID system and cloud storage. More research needs to be done to determine the characteristics of high preservation individuals. The most important determinant of the personal digital archiving behavior of modern soldiers is the value that a soldier ascribes to their personal digital records. Some soldiers see their military service simply as a steady job, albeit an incredibly honorable one. 
For example, subject number 11, a specialist who was a child of migrant farmers, spoke about his efforts to improve his economic situation growing up in Mexico by getting an American education and starting a career in the IT field. The army was seen solely as a way to gain valuable work experience that could be used to transition into employment in the civilian world. The limited value this soldier placed on his military service was reflected in his lack of personal archiving behavior. His personal military records consisted of digital photographs from his first deployment, which he kept on his phone. Many of these photographs were lost when he transitioned to a new device, except for a handful that he posted to Facebook. At the time of the interview, this soldier was undecided as to whether he would leave the army after a few years or make it a lifelong career. It is reasonable to posit that the latter could lead to an increased value being placed on his military service, which may lead to a corresponding increase in effective personal archiving behavior. A soldier's personal growth is correlated with greater value placed on their personal digital records and greater documentation over time. Many of the soldiers that were interviewed discussed keeping more records of their experiences on later tours when they had become, quote, more mature and concerned about having something tangible to look back on from this time in their lives. Some of the soldiers had later had children, which caused an increased concern for wanting to preserve their legacy and leave something behind to help their children better understand their experiences. This concept of value was primarily temporally fixed on the life of the individual soldier, as most soldiers saw their personal records as merely useful tools for short-term activities, such as reminiscing, especially for memories involving fallen battle buddies so that their faces were not forgotten, or connecting with their children. Two notable exceptions to this emerged from this study's findings. Subjects number 10 and subject number 19. These were soldiers whose concept of the value of their personal records transcended their own lives. In their view, these records were not merely useful for personal remembrance, but rather as a public good worthy of historical study. It's no surprise that these individuals are two of the high preservation subjects. Subject number 10 spoke about being inspired by the sheer breadth of his grandfather's personal Vietnam War records and the boon for military historians that his grandfather represented, as well as the feeling of responsibility to save as much as he could from his own military experiences to model his grandfather's efforts. For subject 19, the oral history interview was an opportunity to delve into the philosophical underpinnings of modern warfare and the ways in which the study of war is really a psychological study of mankind. He stated his belief that the personal records of modern soldiers can help future generations better understand these areas of study. At the time of their interview, both individuals were pursuing graduate degrees in history, and subject number 10 had taken on responsibilities as a member of three corps military history detachment. The correlating factors between an interest in history education and high-level personal archiving behavior is a fruitful area for, for, for future research. This study examined the personal archiving practices of a group of U.S. Army soldiers based out of Fort Hood. Further research should be done with larger sample sizes to compare the findings of the, this study with those of similar studies of soldiers from other branches, particularly the Marine Corps, which is known for the care and attention it gives to preserving its organizational history. While the findings of this study suggest that there are inherent problems in the record-keeping habits of modern soldiers, these problems can be mitigated. By encouraging greater personal archiving practices among today's soldiers, we can ensure that we have a robust historical record of modern conflicts for future historians. Thank you for listening.